good morning to everyone welcome to geology classes dear students in earlier class we have learned about sir one minute sir speaker ikonde welcome back to geology classes dear students in earlier class we have learned about the characteristic of living organisms type of organisms based on level of organization and types of symmetries with example and in this class today we will learn about remaining basic characters and their types these are also very necessary for competitive examinations so that it is better to focus in detail and today we will discuss about one of the most very important character that is body plane or body layers and this body layers is also considered as embryonic layers is also known as what embryonic layers body layer and this body layers are also known as embryonic layer and first of all we should come to know that what is embryo and what are the layers and first of all during development of the fetus and this embryo consists of three important layers how these layers are formed means and for this we should know about some basic information about sexual reproduction the animals they can reproduce sexually generally there is a involvement of two sexes one is male and another one is female this male produces the gamete that is known as sperm female produces another cell that is a gamete that is egg these two gametes involving in fertilization these two gametes fuse to each other to produce a diploid cell that is known as zygote what is zygote it is a diploid cell which is formed result of fertilization and this zygote undergo cleavage cleavage means mitotic cell division to produce what one cell into 2 2 into 4 4 into 16 16 to 
like this it will be continued. If this is the case, if it consists of 8 to 16 cells, those are known as morula. And this morula further undergo cleavage to produce 16 to 32 cell states that is known as blastula. This blastula further divides to form three layer embryo that is known as gastrula. And this is not very textbook, but we want to know what is embryo because of that reason. I am telling these kind of informations and this zygote undergo further cleavage to develop small and then blastula and gastrula. Once gastrula is formed, how it is formed means it becomes like this. This is what gastrula. This gastrula mainly made up of three layers. It is a one layer. Okay. And this is another layer and this is the outer layer. Total, how many layers are present in this gastrula? Here, this is the outer layer, this is known as ectoderm. And middle layer is known as meso. Dirt. And inner layer is there, this is in red in color, this is known as endoderm. Here, what do you mean by ecto, meso, and endo means the word itself indicates derm means layer, or also we call it as skin. But here, the derm means layer, ecto means outer. Outer layer of embryo is known as ectoderm, meso means middle. The middle layer of embryo is known as mesoderm, inner layer of layer of embryo is known as endoderm. These are three layers are present in the embryo. Based on these three layers, we have classified into two types of organisms and these three layers are known as embryonic layer are also known as body layers. I think you got the meaning of embryonic layers. And what are the types of organisms which are classified based on these three, three layer means and first of all, we should take triploblastic organisms. Triploblastic organisms. What it means here? Triplo means what? Three. Blastic or der means layer. Here. During the development of any organisms, if their body is made up of three layers and those are known as triploblastic organisms. How these triploblastic organisms are present means, and if you take this diagram which explains triploblastic layers. And in this, this is the outer layer. And we know this, this outer layer consists of what? Various cells. And this outer layer is known as ectoderm. And these are all cells. And these cells are present outside the embryo or outer layer of embryo, these are known as what? Ectoderm. 
after the ectoderm, second layer is known as what? Mesoderm. And this is these are cells. And these are all cells. And these cells, group of cells, form a layer that is known as mesoderm. After the mesoderm, the inner layer is also present. And these are cells to form inner layer. And these are known as endoderm. And here, these organisms mainly consist of three layers outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm. And such organisms are known as triploblastic organisms. What do you mean by triploblastic animals? The animals. They are made up of three embryonic layers such as ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Those are known as triploblastic organisms. What are the examples for triploblastic organisms? Means those are from platyhelminthes to chorids. Let me help you with this too. Chordates. You should take plant helminthes, ascalminthes, onoelida, arthropoda, echinodermita, and remaining chordates. Fishers, amphibians, reptiles, caves, and mammals. All these classes mainly come under these chordates. Now, all the chordates from plant helminthes onwards. All animals, their body is made up of what? Three layers. That's why those are known as triploblastic animals. This is the one type. Second one is that is diploblastic organisms. Second type is what? Diploblastic organisms. What it means? The word itself says diplo means what? Two. Blastic means layer. And diploblastic animal means during the embryonic development the organisms they are developed by two layers. What are those two layers? That is outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. But here, one layer is absent. What is that layer? Instead of that, what are the things are present? We will discuss in this diagram. And this is the one transfer section of animals which are belonging to diploblastic organisms. And as we know that, outer layer of the embryo is known as what? Ecto. The, these are group of cells are there and these group of cells they will arrange into outer layer and these cells of outer layer is known as ectoderm after the ectoderm which is this next layer mesoderm and this mesoderm is absent in diploblastic animals. Instead of that, these organisms consist of what? Inner layer that is known as endoderm. And this is endoderm. The question is, what about mesoderm? In these diploblastic animals, instead of this mesoderm, there is a presence of what? Jelly-like substance. 
it is just like a fluid and this jelly like substance is known as mesoglea that is known as what mesoglea presence of mesoglea in diploblastic animal but it is modified into mesoderm in diploblastic animal and if you look at these two diagrams we will get certain variation that is what mesoglea it is just jelly like substance present in mesoder and there is a specific characteristic of diploblastic organisms then what are the example for diploblastic organisms and those are phylum porifera this porifera is also known as what sponges and after the porifera next one is cylindrata and porifera cylindrata and another phyla is there it's very small phyla that is kinophora kinophora porifera cylindrata these are main three phyla which are belonging to diploblastic organisms because their body is made up of what only two layers and that's why these are known as diploblastic animal these are two types of organisms we have classified based on embryonic layer or body wall dear students if you know these things then it is better to understand remaining things that is coelom and their types and next we should go for another very beautiful concept that is coelom and based on the coelom they ask the many questions for competitive examination as well as theory it is better to focus the question is what you mean by coelom coelom means body cavity what is coelom coelom is a body cavity cavity means space present in the living organism that is known as coelom the question is where this coelom is present and this coelom mainly present in in between body wall as we know that what is the body wall these are also known as embryonic layer and gut where serum is present based on this they will ask questions for the examinations so that it is better to remember where serum is present serum is always present in between body wall and gut and what do we mean by gut gut is also known as elementary canal is also known as what elementary canal what are the parts of elementary canals we have learned in the earlier class those are mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine together we are called it as what elementary canal is also known as gut and in between the gut and body wall there is a presence of space that space is known as coelom presence and absence of these coelom the organisms are mainly classified into three types it is as per your nsat textbook based on the coelom the organisms are mainly grouped into three types what are those three types we will discuss in detail and first of all this coelom is mainly found in all animals but it is also in few group of animals and based on that we have classified it to three important groups one is a coelom a coelom or a coelom what do you mean by a coelom dear students earlier i told you people 
in biology the terms are very easy compared to other subject because in the word itself there is a meaning we don't struggle much like other subject if you open the word if you split the word you will get the meaning what is a zero made here as we know that zero means what body cavity zero means body cavity a means oxen a means oxen if any organisms they does not having any body cavity those are known as acelomates are you got it what is acelomate the organisms they does not having any body cavity in between body wall and gut that is known as acelomate organisms then what are the example the examples or the phylum porifera 2 phylum porifera cylindrata up to platy hermes phylum porifera cylindrata dinofora and platyhelminthes these four phyla does not have any body cavity that's why these are known as acelomates dear students here you must remember the examples based on these examples they will ask many questions and how these acelomates are present means if you take any animal which are belonging to porifera to platyhelminthes if you take transverse sections we can see any kind of spaces or not if you take any organisms of these phylas generally they can shows like this structure in case of porifera you should take a cycon if i try to cut the cycon in platyhelminthes the best example is planaria and if you take any animal their body become like this for example this is what an animal that is what planaria if you cut this animal you will get what like this transverse section and this section is having three layers i will remove the what are those uh the layers are it may be two layers and those are in case of practical analysis you should take if you take planaria transverse section it will become like this and this is the outer layer made up of many cells and these are known as ectodermal cells this layer is known as what ecto der okay and after the ectoderm which is the second layer here, that is mesoderm and this mesoderm is also lined by several cells is also made up of what many cells and these cells together all these cells together to form a second layer that is known as mesoderm after the mesoderm which is the innermost layer the innermost layer is known as endoderm and this is about endo the and out of these layers dear students can you get any space of course you may be recognize some of the space present here actually it is not a space it is a gut i told people this is the gut it is not a space gut is also known as elementary canal if you open the mouth you will get a buccal cavity buccal cavity leads to esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine etc and this part is known as what gut and you must be notice is there any space between 
this gut and this three body layer. Actually, this body layer, the cavity, mainly found in this mesoderm. Generally, this body cavity mainly located in what mesoderm. In these organisms, we cannot get any space in these three body layers. That's why these are known as acelomates. What are the example for acelomates? From Porifera to Platyhelminthes. But in case of Porifera to Cylindrate, and these are diploblastic, we cannot see any space at all. If you take Platyhelminthes, there also we cannot see any space because these are diploblastic. There is not any cavities. That's why these are acelomates. And after the acelomate, next one is what? Second type of organisms based on the body cavity that is coelomates. Here, okay, what is the difference here? It is a coelomate. It is a coelomate. That means the coelomate organisms. These are the organisms. They have a body cavity. The body cavity present in this animal that is known as coelomates. Coelomates having the body cavity, and that's why these are known as coelomates animals. Where this coelom is present, this coelom mainly surrounded by mesoderm, and this body cavity or coelom surrounded by which layer? Ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. It is mainly surrounded by what? Mesoderm. And those animals are known as coelomates animals. What are the example for coelomate animal males? And those are from Anilina to Cordata. Anilina to what? Cordata. How many phyla are present in between the Onilida to Cordate? Onilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermita. In Cordata, there is a fishes, amphibians, reptiles, apes, and mammals. All these classes and phyla, those are examples for coelomate because they are having body cavity. That body cavity mainly surrounded by this mesoderm. How we can represent? We can represent through the diagrams like this. This is what outer layer. This outer layer is known as what ectoderm. These ectoderms are lined by group of cells, and these cells together to form a main outer layer that is known as ectoderm. Okay. After the ectoderm, which is the next layer, that is the mesoderm. And how the mesoderm is present? It is become like this. This is the cells of mesoderm. This is the second layer, isn't it? And which is the third layer? Third layer is endoderm. And this endoderm is also having what cells like this, okay? And these are endodermal cells. That is endoderm, and this is the mesoderm again. Okay? And whatever the green lines are visible here. Generally, these are what mesoderm. This is the one mesoderm. It is also this mesoderm is treated here. Now, these two layers are known as mesoderm. In between the mesoderm, dear students, we can see this space. We we'll get these are all space, and this space is known as silo. And this space is there. And this space is known as what? Coelom. I will write this space here. This is known as what? Coelom. And that's why these are known as 
zero rates. But in NCRT textbook, the diagram is not like this. They have done little change. They become like this. These cells are present here, and this space is there. This off space, and here this off space, and this is known as what? Zero. And you might be notice where zero is located. Is it located at ectoderm? Is it located at mesoderm? Where it is located? It is present in the mesoderm. This body cavity is completely surrounded by mesoderm, and that is the one specific characteristic of ciliomids. And if you take any kind of animals which are grown in between the anelidar to chordata, they have this kind of layer, and that's why these are known as ciliomids. And the second type, and these ciliomids again are classified into different types. Those are schizocilomates and heteroscilomates. These are not present in our syllabus. And just to remember, this diagrams example with definition that is enough. Now, this eucilomate, this silomate is also considered as different terms. When you gone through various textbook, and this silomate is also called it as. U silomates. It is continued like this. It is U silomate. It is also known as true silomates. These are known as what? True silomates. True silomates, U silomates, silomates, all are give the same meaning and you can write this kind of definitions. And this is the second type of what? Silom, that is silomate. And third type is there, that is pseudo silomate. It is a little different than the silomate as well as a silomates. Now we can discuss about these pseudo silomate organisms. I think these diagrams are very necessary for your uh, examinations, as well as these diagrams are very necessary to remember the definition as well as the example. Here, after the silomate, there is another group of organisms. Those are known as third type is there. That is pseudo silomates. What is third type of silom? Third type of silom is pseudo silomates. The word pseudo represents what? False. False or not well developed, not true. And that's why uh, the pseudo represents what? Wrong. You might be seeing pseudo podia, false leg. And like this, pseudo zero means there is no zero. And like this, and these pseudo silomates are organisms that does not have a well developed silo, and they have what false silo or 
the ceiling is not well developed. The ceiling is not well developed, but the ceiling is there, but that is scattered in that ceiling is scattered in Minnesota. And this small serums are present in Minnesota, and those serums are mainly covered by this Minnesota, and those organisms are known as pseudo -serums. We can define like this, and these are the organisms. The serum or the body cavity is scattered in the Minnesota. Or these are organisms that are not having very well developed serum. And for this pseudo serumate, which finalized example means. That is Ascal Mentis. This Ascal Mentis is the only one phyla which exhibits pseudo serums. And next one is what is the structure of this Ascal Mentis uh, organism means? And for the Ascal Mentis, you should take the common example that is Ascalis. And ascaris is just like a thread like worm. It's become like this. If you cut this ascaris like this and observe under the microscope, how it is visible? Visible like this. And what are the diagrams you have seen in the serumate and acerumate? Here also skin. This is the transfer section of this ascalmentis or any organisms are belonging to solo serumin and this outer layer known as ectoderm and these all cells are known as layers to form ecto Done. And after the ectoderm, which is the third layer, third layer is ectoderm. This is endoderm. That is known as what? Endoderm. But here, can you see any kind of mesoderm? The mesoderm is absent here, but how it is visible means the mesoderm is present like this, and these are what cavities or space, and this space is known as serum. But this serum is not continued in the mesoderm, but these serums are scattered and spread in the mesoderm in the form of Patches. This is the one small patch, this is another patch, third and fourth. Like this, the patches of silo is scattered in the mesoderm and it is known as pseudo -silomates. And this is silo surrounded by the cells. And these are mesoderm. And this is what? Mesoderm. I told you people, in case of solo serumin, serum is scattered in the mesoderm in the form of pouches, and those are known as solo serumins. And these are three types of organisms we have classified based on the serum. Those are solo serumin, serumin, as well as a serumin. Here, you must remember the diagrams, example, and definitions. After the silo, which is the next concept, and another very easy concept, that is segmentation. That is what? 
segmentation. What do you mean by segmentation? Segmentation means in case of some animal, the body of organisms divides both externally and internally to form small compartments, and those are nothing but what segments that is known as segmentation. What is segmentation? In case of the body of animals, the body of organisms or animals divides. They can, they will divide. How they will divide? They divide both externally as well as internally. Externally as well as internally, they have divided into small compartments, are they segments, and that is known as segmentations. For the segmentations, we will take the best example that is earthworm. We should take which is the best example for segmentation that is earthworm. It is a very well known. Anilidin, it is very necessary for farmers to increase the fertility of soil, etc. That's why it is known as friend of farm. How these earthworms are present? Then it is present like this. Like it. Okay. And this earthworm, if you notice clearly on the surface, on the body surface, there is a presence of what? Segments. Segments they can divide both externally as well as internally, like this. They can divide both externally as well as internally. And these segments become what? Serial. We can take this diagram. And these are small segments and these segments repeat many times it is depending upon organisms but in case of onylidans these segments are repeated for many organs and this is the main specific characteristic of onylidans they look like a ring that's why these are known as ringworms and next one is and these segmentations we have noticed in some other phyla like Arthropodus and these animals having jointed legs. Arthro means jointed, poda means legs. These animals they having jointed legs, those are known as arthropodus. These arthropodus having segments that is only external. Only external. You might notice in case of Scorpio. Or in case of cockroach, how it is present? If this cockroach or any kind of animal remains, they can divide like this. See it? And these segments are found externally, not internally. But in case of human beings, we will get segments only in internal. In abdomen, you might be noticed, and they have six facts. And those six facts are the thing work internal segments, they are found in chordates, especially in case of mammals. But in case of if you go for segmentation, it is as per the definition, and this segmentation must be formed both externally as well as internally. This is the first three characters we have seen, one of the great important phyla that is anelida. That is Anelida. Based on this Anelida, they will ask many questions. It is better to remember. And this is the another type of basic characters. Often segmentation and another very important character that is the classification of organisms based upon digestive. System. As we know that, and digestive system is composed of what? Many organs. 
In last class, I have drawn the diagram, which consists of buccal cavity, esophagus, stomach, intestine, rectum, anus. And based on the presence and options of digestive system, the organisms are mainly classified into two types. What are those two type names? One is incomplete digestive system and is also known as body plate. And another one is complete digestive system. What do you mean by complete and incomplete means? It is mainly classified based on presence of opening. What is that opening? In case of in earlier class, in earlier uh, concept, you have learned that there is a presence of what? Blastula. The blastula become like this. And blastula is later converted into what? Gastrula. This gastrula has an opening that is known as blastophore. And this blastophore, they can develop into various parts. In case of incomplete digestive system, this blastophore develops into mouth as well as anus. In case of incomplete digestive system, the organisms they have it only one opening. How many openings are present in the incomplete digestive system? That is only one opening. And this single opening acts as both organs. One is mouth as well as anus. This is very tragedy. Only one opening through which it can take the food as well as it can eject the food. For this, we will take this is the best example for you people. This is the one animal transfer sections. In this animal, how many openings we have seen here? Only one opening. This opening acts as a mouth through which it will take the food to the same opening which can eject the food, which can remove the waste that is known as canus. And such organisms are known as incomplete digestive system organisms. And this kind of systems we have seen in case of phylum Porifera 2. Phylum Porifera 2 Plati Helminthes. I told you people, this is the plain area. I have told here the plain area having what? Only one, one, one opening. Through this opening, it will take the food as well as eject the food, and those comes under incomplete digestive system, is also known as blind cell. It's also known as what? Blind cell. It is become blind cell. There is only one opening and another opening is completely closed. This is like a blind. Through this, it can take the food as well as eject the food. That's why it is known as what? Blind set. And another one is complete digestive system. If we know this one, we will get the meaning. What is the meaning of complete digestive system means? In this organism, they have two openings. How many openings are present here? Two openings are present. And in these two opening, one opening is acts as mouth and another opening acts as a anus. Because as per the evolution, when organisms are evolved for the complex level and each opening performing what? Different function. And this is mainly found in higher animals from Ascalmentis to from Ascalmentis to cordyx. In case of human beings, we have studied that the digestive system of human being is consists of various organs. This is a vocal cavity. This is the vocal cavity. This is what? Esophagus is opens into what? Stomach and it becomes what? 
large intestine and small intestine finally it opens into recta and in between this there is a presence of what small intestine this is the one opening through which we will take the food that is known as what mouth i told you people in complete digestive system two openings are present one opening is acts as a mouth and last opening it acts as a anus and this is the two important features find in all the phyla which becomes under ascalmentis to cordatus ascalmentis annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermita and cordata consists of five classes all these animals consist of what open type oh, sorry complete digestive system and this complete digestive system is also known as tube within tube and these terms are not prescribed in the ncert textbook if you go for some other publications you will get this kind of words in that don't get confused both are the same incomplete digestive system represents blind sac and the tube within the tube which represents what complete digestive system these are types of organisms we have categorized based on digestive system and next one is and uh, next concept is the classification of organisms based on circulatory system as well as notochord about that we will discuss in the next class thank you so much